You looking for a good thing to use those used solar panels on? Well, I got an idea for you. Here I have built a solar shed with 12 used panels that cost me a grand total of $180. Yes, you heard that right. 12 panels that cost $180. I simply mount the panels to the shed, run them in four in series, three parallel, and then send them over to the RV. The RV contains the Victron charge controller, the smart charge controller. It is a 150 volt, 35 amps smart charge controller. And then it has, it has 31 kilowatt hours of batteries that store all this power in addition to storing the additional 20 to 25 kilowatt hours that comes off of the roof panels. On top of the RV, there is another 3,700 watts of power up there. And those combined with these generate up to 30 to 35 kilowatt hours a day. And all of that energy is stored in my RV's batteries and a 6,000 XP I use to produce all of the power that runs my entire RV 24 seven off grid practically for the whole year so far. Now these panels I found online and I'll include a video link to how I did it. It's basically comes down to good heavy persistence and watching and tracking and keeping an eye out for good deals and then being able to take advantage of those good deals when they pop up. Now, I did have to drive about uh, I would say probably about 110 miles to get these. And I did have to shop through about 600, maybe a thousand scammers in order to find real panels on sale. Now, a lot of people ask, the only idiots would sell panels like this for that price. So let me explain why they were sold that way to me in this particular case. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other reasons that they could be sold this way. In this case, there was a solar farm being opened up here in central, central North, central Florida. And when that solar farm deal fell through, the guy who owned the land had hundreds of these panels. And I would say, when I say hundreds, I mean three, four, five hundred of them. He decided that he couldn't do anything with them and they were sitting out there aging. Now they are 250 watt panels and they are a little bit older and the connectors on them are worn off and needed to be replaced and they don't generate the full 250 watts. Now there is 3000 watts of power on this shed, but because they are set up the way they are, they don't get that much. The panels on the top produce pretty good. These I can get on a good day about 700 watts out of uh, running watts. And I don't know what the kilowatt power is over the, the period of the day the kilowatt hours that they produce over the day. But I will start pulling some statistics on that and post them soon. But I do run them in four on this side in a series, four on the back side, plus this one right there on the corner in series, and then the four on the top. The four on the top produce practically all day long. The sun comes up over here, it runs across the sun. Right now it's 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is directly above me in early summer here. So I've got great sunlight. The panels on this side produce in the morning from about 10 o'clock once they get up over this building next to me. And they hit these four panels and they produce in the morning. So you'll see, a, you can see a spike in the, in the, the stats there where they're producing more than normal. Whereas these are just running off the regular ambient light that comes out during the morning. But in the afternoon, the sun sets right over here between my RV and this other building. And I get full sunlight for these for hours and hours and hours. So right up till about 6, 630 at night, I'm pulling again from all the panels in the series, about a thousand watts. So is it the best performance in the world? No. If I laid these panels across the ground out here, would I get more? Probably would. Actually, I know I would because I did that. But here's the restriction. 
if I am going to have these panels in the park that I'm in and be just right there from the river, then they have to be either mounted to my shed or mounted to my RV. No exceptions. If they're not on one of these two buildings, I'm not allowed to have them. So that said, I placed all 12 of these on the shed in order to get as much power out of them as I possibly could. This is the reason behind the solar shed is that I was looking for more power when I'm not traveling. So I can just plug in when I get home, plug in, use the extra power when I'm here. Now, when I'm traveling, the RV has a charge controller. As I said, the Victron 150 35 amp charge controller where it can take these panels in that produce between 90 and 120 volts. And those 90 to 120 volts and open circuit voltage is right around 130. They produce that. They um, were fed into that and, and, and charge and give me six to seven kilowatt hours a day in good sunlight, obviously. Bad days, it can be much less than that, which nobody should be surprised by that. The RV, already has the charge controller, already has the batteries, already has the solar system, and is already prepared to go boondocking. What I didn't have was a way to easily just connect some panels when I got where I was going or when I'm home and I want some extra power. Now, when I'm traveling, I can also hook up portable panels or bring some of these with me and lay them down on the ground. But the purpose behind this was to comply with the regulations that allow me to have them here and be able to stay here close to the river where I can enjoy the the, the nice fishing and the other things that go on down at the river. So I hope this answers the questions about the solar shed, why I did it the way I did it, and where I got my panels from, and how you can build one of these yourself. But if you have questions, feel free in the comments below. I love the questions. It's my favorite part about doing this is answering the questions and making sure that you have everything you need. Also, if you're interested, every Sunday at four o'clock here in Eastern time zone, um, I do a live stream and I'll be glad to answer any questions about the solar shed. It is always one of my topics of discussion. So thank you for watching and don't forget, like and subscribe. It'll help me grow.